Hello again from Wayne's Tinkering page. This is an article that sort of continues my previous one on the auto power board that I developed as a spin-off of my Sonic Grenade project. This one is using a real-time clock module as the trigger source to actually power up the Arduino. The clock is currently programmed to wake up once every minute and then power up the, uh, the Arduino it then will stay on for about a second and then it should power itself down. It's using the same boost converter that I used in my previous video on the on the push button power switch for Arduino. So basically the same architecture except there's no push button to trigger anything down here. Instead there's just the output signal from the interrupt line that comes off the, uh, the real-time clock. So if, I'm, if I've got my timing correct here, right about now the LED comes on, that was the Arduino powering itself up basically just waiting one second to simulate doing something important. The only other components are a couple of resistors here to implement the I2C bus um, that uses to talk to the Arduino and it's arranged such that the whole thing is is only powered up. The I2C bus is only has, has power applied to it when the rest of the circuit is powered up. So essentially the current drain is just what it takes to keep the real-time clock running. Now, I bought this cheap module off eBay that includes battery backup but they also threw in some other parts, um, including um, an EEPROM and uh, a little LED that lights up to indicate when the power's on and some resistor pull-ups that are not necessary. So, And this version of the board here, I ripped all those all those parts off and just left the, um, uh, essentially the clock chip, which is a Maxim DS3231 chip. Well, they also had some kind of a bogus charging circuit implemented over here that's supposed to be charging the battery, but... I don't think you're really supposed to charge these kind of lithium cells, so I've removed that as well. Um, so the power is now quite low. Um, there's an accompanying article for this. I've, I've broken out some times for how long I believe this circuit will run based on my calculations. I'm just going to provide a quick overview of the circuit and the programming. I think you should really read this article before you attempt to use any of these functions. But the Basic circuit is very similar to the one I used in the auto power push button circuit in my previous video using a boost regulator to power up an Arduino, in this case a Pro Micro. You'll notice that the boost regulator also is connected to the pull up resistors for the I2C bus because it isn't necessary to power this up unless, it's, unless the Pro Micro is powered up and, and talking to the DS3231 chip. However, notice that the VCC line for the clock chip is connected to the battery directly. So this circuit is maintained power all the time. If this is not true, it will not be able to assert the interrupt line or, or, or trigger any of its alarms. This is separate from the battery backup, which is in this case only really used in the case where you need to change the batteries over here um, or you're doing programming operations and you were maybe removing the clock chip. Um, notice the interrupt line goes low on the clock and which is the same signal required to enable the auto power, which brings everything up and, and powers it up. And as, as before, the hold line needs to be the first thing the Pro Micro does to assert that high uh, to maintain the power. Then it's going to talk to the clock chip, and in this case it's going to issue a command to reset the alarm, and that's going to disable this interrupt signal here. Talks briefly about showing the location of parts and the parts that I removed off the clock chip. And then here's the library, or here's the here's the code that uses the, the library that I wrote to work with the DS3231. There's a separate page on Wayne's Tinkering page that talks about this library, and I'll, I'll cover that in a minute. But uh, the gist of the way this circuit works, the one that I demonstrated being powered up every minute, is there's two steps to using it. The first step is you have to compile this code with this value set to one and then run it. And what that does is it actually programs the alarm chip to set the current time of day or some time of day, it doesn't matter really what it is, and then sets up the alarm, enables the appropriate alarm and disables the one it's not using, which is alarm one. In this case, we're using alarm two because it's the one that provides the ability to interrupt every minute and alarm one does, does not have that capability. Then you recompile the code again with this set back to zero that turns off this code so it doesn't set the time it, or, or the alarms because they've already been set and, and those settings will be maintained as long as battery power is maintained. In this case, when it wakes up, it just asserts the whole line. 
initialize as a library, which you have to do every time the thing powers up. It, it clears the alarm because it needs to do this to, to clear the interrupt pin. It delays for a thousand milliseconds or one second to simulate doing something useful like maybe it's logging data out to an SD card or doing some kind of radio communications or something. When it's done, it then takes the hold line low and the whole thing powers off. And the next time the interrupt pin goes low again, everything powers back up and the same sequence goes through again. You may be wondering, this this whole point of this is, is essentially to save power because you could easily have a really huge battery and just leave the Arduino running all the time, but that would pretty quickly run things down. In my experiments, the Arduino itself, when, when fully powered, um, takes something around, I don't know, 15 to 20 milliampers. So we can do the math yourself and figure out that's not really going to last all that long. So here I'm measuring the actual power draw of the circuit when it's just essentially, in essence, sleeping. The Everything's powered down except for the clock chip. And I measured 113.2 microampers, which is in the range of the data sheet for the clock chip, which says it should draw somewhere between 100 and 170 microamps. Now, before I removed all those other parts, the LED and so forth, it was drawing close to four or five milliampers. So it's well worth removing those because it's going to significantly increase your runtime. Down here, I do some estimates based around some assumptions about how long the circuit's going to remain powered up and so forth. And, various levels of efficiency as to how long this thing is, is, is going to be capable of running. Um, you, your mileage may vary, but I just kind of want to give you a rough estimate of how big of a battery you might need to keep this thing running for you know, some number of hours or, or some number of days. I wrote a whole separate page on the clock library because there's more applications for it than just being used for waking up the Arduino. Um, I recommend you see the link in the article on, on this on this video that will go to this library as well, or just look for it on, on Wayne's tinkering page. So the library provides functions to talk to most of the built-in capabilities of a DS3231. The first thing you have to do is, of course, use a constructor here to create an instance of the library, which is I'm going to call the RTC. And then there's various functions you can call, such as one, such as parse time, which you can pass in a string that represents a time value, for example, that looks like this. And this converts it into the data that needs to be sent to the clock chip to actually uh, program that particular time or date or whatever. Likewise, there's a, um, a mode you can set to switch between AM and PM. Normally, it'll figure that out from the, from the, from the particular format you used up here. If you set it like this, it'll assume you're using 24-hour time. If you provide an A M or A or a P on the end, it'll assume you're going to use A and P M time. Then there's functions to parse um, date and time together. Um, and once you've done that, you can then call the, the set date time function, which actually programs in, sends the data out to the clock chip and 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 sets up its registers to represent that time. Then you can you can call a similar function to get the date and time back and it copies it into this array. Then using that array, you can call type a function, for example, um, time to string here, which will convert that, 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 that binary value back into a character string that represents the time. Or you can call date to string on the same data and get the date portion back out as a string. Or ultimately, you can call day of week to string and get the day of week that this corresponds to. Internally, the clock chip, the DS3231, keeps track of the day of week as well. So it's just useful for alarm functions like you may want to set an alarm to go off on Friday, for example. Um, then there's functions for converting time to seconds, um, which you can use to perform various kinds of math um, on, on time, such as you can add a certain number of, of seconds to a, to, a, to a time value. This is useful because, for example, there's no interrupt every our function in, in the alarms. Um, but by using this kind of time math, every time the system wakes up, it can get the current time. It can calculate what time it needs to be uh, one hour from now and then set an alarm for that particular time. Uh, these are the set alarm functions where you pass in the time value that you've, that you've parsed up here where you've done the time math on. And this indicates the type of alarm you're going to set. They're essentially the type value is used to set 
uh, not only which alarm you're setting, alarm one or alarm two, but also indicate the kind of alarm you're setting up. Alarm one, for example, can interrupt every second or can interrupt every time the seconds value matches or every time the minutes and second value matches or when the hour, minutes, and seconds match or when the date, hour, minute, seconds match or when the day of week and the hour, minute, seconds match. And likewise, the same is true for alarm two, except that it doesn't extend down to every second. It only begins at every minute um, and only matches accordingly. And this is the one I chose, alarm every minute for my example code. Once you've set an alarm, you have to enable it. So you can call enable it to pass in either enable or disable. So you can switch alarms on and off. Now the most important function to keep track of is, is clear alarms. Each time you get an interrupt that wakes the system up, you have to call clear alarms that because it's going to be used to actually clear the signal that woke the system up. If you don't call this alarm and you go back to sleep, it's just going to wake itself right back up again. You can also call get alarms to determine which alarm it was that woke you up. It could be one or the other or both in this case. Or you can read back the alarm time that you set previously. This is a way, for example, of doing that alarm math that I talked about. If you initially set the alarm to go off at 1.05 p.m., you read that value back and you can call add time to it to add uh, uh, 60 minutes to it and then set that alarm again. It's going to go off at 2.05 p.m. and so forth. But that way you can kind of keep reissuing the alarm or resetting it for one event off in the future. And then finally, there's a, a, a function called enable 32 kHz pin. The, the interrupt signal has a, has a double purpose. You can actually, if you call this function, it converts it into a, into a, a pin that outputs a 32 kHz square wave, uh, which would be useful for other functions. But since the chip can do it, I decided to include it in, in the library as well. In addition to talking about waking up an Arduino based on time events, I'm also going to talk about basic low power techniques using the same circuit. In this case, I have a, a simple RS latch implemented via two NAND gates. And a button, when I, when I flip it, will set the latch to one state, and as a result, will wake up the little AT Tiny 85 up here, which then waits one second and then issues commands back to reset this latch and then power itself down. So this represents essentially having some kind of external hardware interrupt that comes along, like say um, uh, a sensor is tripped and executes an event which causes the system to wake up and investigate what's going on, or some other kind of real-time event that would happen. In addition to responding to time-based events triggered off the interrupt line from a real-time clock, there are situations you might also want to have an Arduino power itself up in response to an external signal, such as a sensor being tripped. And this is a basic circuit that accomplishes that. It implements what's called an RS latch, although you could use a flip-flop or other combinations to do this, but essentially a, a positive going pulse here flips this uh, the state of this latch such that this signal goes low, which pulls through the diode the, the not enable line low, which powers the circuit up. Now, since the latch has been flipped, before we can switch everything off, we have to also reset latch. So there's a signal here that, that's used to do that by, by putting in a positive pulse, uh, it'll, it'll reset the latch. That's under the assumption that this signal has already gone back low again. I'll talk about that in a second. And then it uses the usual configuration of a hold line here to turn the, uh, to keep the circuit powered up until the Arduino wants to power down. So the code for this goes as follows. Uh, at, there's essentially the SR reset line that's used to reset the latch and the hold line is before. So the first thing the code always does is to assert the, the hold line high to keep it powered up. And then it programs the, uh, the SR reset line to be an output and it takes it low. Now, um, the code to reset the latch I've included in the loop here, which is going to be called over and over again because of the situation where if the sensor, for example, stays asserted for longer than it takes this circuit to power up and do some useful work, if you were to exit, if you're only to reset the latch up in the setup code, uh, you may not be able to reset the latch because the, the power on signal that's coming in the latch is still high. So by putting it in the loop, it's going to try over and over again to reset the latch, and eventually it'll be able to do so and then be able to power itself down.
So I hope the information in this video was useful to you and that the associated web pages are as well. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Thank you.